At first I was confused about all the different terms used in off-grid solar power. But now I am more familiar with them and want to share them with you. Stick to the end because you don't want to miss the best way to remember the formulas. Amperage is current through a circuit. This fuse has a current capacity of 35 amps. Voltage is a unit of electrical potential. The voltage at your house is 120 volts or 230 volts alternating current. A battery bank can be 12, 24 or 48 volt direct current. Resistance is a measurement of the obstructions in a circuit. It can be used to heat water like a kettle. The more components like lugs, switches and fuses you have, the more resistance there is in your circuit. Watts are used to measure the power of appliances or power production of solar panels. For example, a fridge with a power rating of 200 watts. 1000 watts equals 1 kilowatt. If we know the voltage and the current, we can calculate the power. 12 volts times 10 amps equals 120 watts. To measure the power consumed over a specific time, we use watt hour. This is the unit on your electrical bill. If a 1000 watt heater runs for one hour, the heater consumed 1000 watt hours or one kilowatt hour. Another example would be a heater at 120 volts and 10 amps that runs for two hours, which consumes 2400 watt hours or 2.4 kilowatt hours. We use this formula when we do load calculation to size or off-grid solar system. Check my video about it later. If your solar panel is 100 watts and you have 4 sun hours per day, your solar panel can produce 400 watt hours. If your battery is 1200 watt hours and you recharge the battery with a 100 watt solar panel and you have 4 sun hours per day, it will take 3 hours to recharge the battery. Watt hour can also be used in battery systems. A 12 volt battery with a capacity of 100 amp hours has a stored energy potential of 1200 watt hours. A 48 volt battery with a capacity of 25 amp hours also has a stored energy potential of 1200 watt hours. So watt hour is a combination of voltage and capacity. It's important to use watt hours as an indication of total energy storage in a battery. The difference between AC and DC is that DC is used in battery systems and solar panels. Everything that comes from the grid or after your power inverter is AC. Useful for figuring out if breakers are AC or DC rated. In a series circuit, the voltage is added up, while in parallel circuit, the current or capacity is added up. A series circuit is where the solar panels or batteries are connected with the positive to the negative and so on. A parallel circuit is where all the positive and negatives are combined with each other. This becomes the output voltage and current for two solar panels. If you expect shade on your panels or have a PWM charge controller, then wire in parallel. Otherwise, always wire in series up to the maximum allowable input voltage of the charge controller. For two batteries, this becomes the battery voltage and capacity. Maximum battery charge is determined by the C rate. Lead acid is 0.2 C and lithium is 1 C. A 100 amp hour lead acid battery should be charged with a maximum of 20 amps. A 100 amp hour lithium battery should be charged at a maximum of 100 amps. Jay was confused about solar power until he got my free diagrams delivered to his email inbox. Do you want 7 diagrams too? Check the first link in the description. We don't use Ohm's law a lot in off-grid power systems. But an example can be your electrical water heater with a resistor of 10 ohms and a voltage of 120 volts. The current through the circuit is 12 amps. Power calculations are used the most in solar systems. For example, a solar panel with a voltage of 20 volts and a current of 5 amps has a power rating of 100 watts. You can find out the current through a conductor. We use this to calculate the wire size later on in this video. For example, a 5000 watt inverter on a 48 volt battery system. The current through the wire is 104 amps. To find out the stored energy in a battery, use the following formula. Watt hours equals battery voltage times battery capacity. 
A 12 volt 100 amp hour battery can store a total of 1200 watt hours. Or a 48 volt 100 amp hour battery can store 4800 watt hours. If you have an 1800 watt hour 12 volt battery, then the capacity of the battery is 150 amp hours. The trick to remembering the formula is to place them in a triangle. You can then figure out when you need to multiply and when to divide. As you can see, if you need to know the voltage, then you multiply current and resistance. If you need the current, then you divide the voltage by the resistance and so on. If the current increases, we have to increase the diameter of the wire. If you have a wire with the same thickness, they can carry different currents because they have different isolation temperature. For example, 4 gauge THW wire with 75 degrees Celsius insulation can carry 85 amps, while 4 gauge 105 degrees Celsius welding wire can carry 150 amps. You have to choose your wire carefully and look at the temperature rating of the conductor. In DC systems, we do not use solid core wire, we must use flexible wire. Always use copper wire instead of aluminium or copper clad aluminium. We determine the wire size by calculating the current in the system. For example, an 800 watt inverter with a 12 volt battery will pull a current of 66 amps. We multiply by a safety factor of 125 to become 82 amps. Now we need to select a wire that can carry at least 82 amps. One such wire is 6 gauge or 16 square millimeter wire at 105 degrees Celsius insulation. This wire can take a maximum of 115 amps. We now have to select the fuse which is between 82 amps and 115 amps. A 100 amp fuse is ideal. We only fuse a positive wire in the circuit. Always use lux which cost more than $1 each. Otherwise it's too thin and the connection will get loose and heat up. Reducing cost in your system should be done by increasing the voltage. As you can see from the power formula, if we increase the voltage the current will decrease. If we decrease the current in the system, we can get a cheaper charge controller, improve system efficiency, reduce voltage drop and use less thick wires. This is the easiest method of reducing system costs. I recommend staying below 100 amp in your system. With voltage drop we want to minimize the power losses in the wire. In order to do so, we must limit the resistance in the wire. We do this by increasing the thickness of the wire. For example, a solar panel is 100 watts at 5 amps and 20 volts, at a distance of 100 feet or 30 meters to your charge controller, with a 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square wire. The power at the solar panel is 100 watts, but the voltage after 100 feet of wire has now dropped by 2.5 volts which is a voltage drop of 12%. This is a power loss of 13 watts. Use a voltage drop calculator in order to minimize the voltage drop at the end of the wire to 3%. I've made a whole video about it, so go check it out after this one. My next video will be about comparing the cost of DIY lithium to off-the-shelf batteries. So make sure you're subscribed to find out.